Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into this week's Georgia State Sports Update. And welcome into this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Dave Cohen in studio, joined in this segment by Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb. Charlie, you've been here once. Great to have you back. And uh, it's a very, very exciting time in uh, Georgia State Athletics. We're going to talk a lot about the future of what's coming up around the corner for Georgia State Athletics. But right now, let's start off talking about the spring sports because uh, we've got a lot of successful spring sports going on right now. It's been a tremendous spring for us. I appreciate you and the others having me on. The show today because uh, we've got a lot of great things to, to talk about and our spring spring teams have had a, a really successful year and obviously highlighted by a conference championship from a women's tennis program uh, men's golf had a great run in the tournament lost in the match play uh, at the wire and uh, and obviously our men's tennis team went into the conference tournament as the number one seed and and were upset in the semis but uh, really highlighted by those three and then and then obviously uh, beach volleyball getting their their NCAA bid uh, it's just been a been a great run and, you know, in your chair, of course, you know, from the outside looking in, someone who doesn't work in athletics collegiately, so much of the focus during the year is on college football or it's on college basketball for men's and women's. And, you know, during the time of the year for the College World Series, the college baseball tournament, a lot of folks don't realize because it doesn't receive the same media attention on a weekly basis uh, that these spring sports are having the success that they're having that just kind of flies under the radar a little bit. Yeah, you know, ultimately for us, we want to, we want to run a, a total athletic program, and that means, you know, academic success, social success, and then obviously the competitive side of what we're trying to do across all 16 sports. And so, uh, really, uh, you know, I think it's our job and our opportunity to uh, to help these kids uh, get the uh, exposure that they need, these programs to to get the media attention they need. But uh, uh, it's also part of what I think makes you know being a college athlete very special, and that's the fact that uh, kids get to live their dream, uh, childhood dreams, if you will, to to compete uh, in an NCAA Division I team uh, at a university where they can receive a great education and, uh, and live and work in the, the city of Atlanta. And so we, we've got all those factors in place for our teams to be successful. I think we've got a great group of coaches across the board. Uh, we've got some incredible individual stories uh, on these teams that are, that are playing and competing and, and they serve us proud. You know, and it's easy to tell that story uh, about the kids and about their successes and, and, and honestly about our coaches and, and some of the successes they've had because they're good people, and, and that's, uh, that's the fun part of this, this uh, job. I guess that's what <clears throat> makes it even more exciting to be at Georgia State right now, because those of us that have been around for a while have seen where this program was and where it has come from, and to see where it is now and to see the possibilities that are right around the corner here in the next, say, three to five years, makes it a very exciting uh, situation to be in the middle of uh, with everything that's happened even here in the last couple of years with football and with men's basketball and with, as, as we just said with the spring sports experiencing the success that they're experiencing right now. I mean Georgia State is definitely one of the universities and athletic departments that we would term on the rise. It's, it's a transformational time yeah. for our university. It's a transformational time for, for our <coughs> athletics program and you know the, the puzzle pieces are here to be an incredibly successful Division One athletic program uh, minus facilities, and that's been the the focus for a year of of trying to uh, you know develop these facilities to give our kids an opportunity to compete in a first class environment. Uh, I, I don't think you have to look any further than, than beach volleyball as, as a shining example of the fact that you hire the right coach, uh, you fund the program from a scholarship standpoint, from an operations standpoint, and uh, and then you give them a facility that matches what their competitive peers have, and so you've given you know, that program every opportunity to be successful. And, and, and as we sit here today, we're in our second um, postseason berth, first NCAA tournament berth because it's the first time the NCAA sponsored beach volleyball. And, uh, you know, what Beth and her, her staff and her kids have done uh, is truly inspirational for the rest of the department. But it also is a, is a great, um, you know, individual um, subset of what can be done if and when coaches and, and, and the university were given the complete package of tools to to really go recruit the, the best available students to, to make our programs wor work and operate efficiently. Talking to Georgia State's Athletic Director Charlie Cobb here on the Georgia State Sports Update. 
As we continue on this interview, uh, and this is our final show until August, we're going to talk about the challenges of facilities that Charlie just mentioned. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, unless you've been under a rock, the Turner Field story has been out there now for a little over a year and what that will mean to Georgia State University. But is that one of the biggest challenges you still face, putting Turner Field aside? Because that's a big, big project right there, but facilities for some of the other sports. Coming into Georgia State and being here now a little over a year, is that the biggest challenge or one of the biggest challenges that you've faced and t try to tackle each and every day? Yeah, you know, first I'm trying to get, get through the thought process of just how big that rock would have to be for you to be under it. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking we might need a serious backhoe to move it, but uh, um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity. I look at, at every situation uh, as challenges. I'm, I'm one of those guys that you know, it's not glass isn't half empty, it's, it's usually half full. And, and what is that next opportunity around the corner? And, and sometimes I may get out a little bit ahead of, of what's in the immediate. But uh, again, it goes back to, I think it, it's pretty simple. If you want to be successful, playing at the level that we, we play at now and, and ultimately the level that we aspire to be at, um, you've got to have great people around you, which I think we have. Uh, you've got to have the resources to be competitive and, then, and, then, and part of that, frankly, facilities. because. Uh, as a kid, when you're coming on a visit, you want to see where you're going to practice, where you're going to play, where you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, uh, where your daily life is going to be. And, uh, and the opportunity in front of us to radically change that experience for pretty much probably 300 of the 380 kids that play sports here, um, it's truly a, it's an awesome thought and, and certainly an, an enticing thought, but it's also one that's, the fun part is it's literally right around the corner. Yep. And instead of talking about what can be or could be, uh, we're going to be very quickly talking about what is going to be and and definitive plans and, and I appreciate the leadership that that Dr. Brecker and his staff bring to the table because there is a, there is a solid vision for Georgia State to really be a, a truly aspirational school for a lot of kids and as an athletics we're, we're a part of that and a, and a very visible part of it and so uh, having that responsibility having that opportunity um, is, is something that that honestly every day makes this this an exciting exciting opportunity for for myself and for others within our within our staff all right we'll come back and talk with charlie we'll talk more about facilities at georgia state and what's around the corner including turner field as well as a few other items on the docket here we're talking georgia state's athletic director charlie cobb busy time for georgia state uh in between segments here because uh, as we've said a lot of success for these spring sports so time now to take a look at what's coming up on the schedule here in georgia state athletics Coming up this week in Georgia State Athletics on Saturday, May the 7th at 1 and at 3. Georgia State Softball hosting Georgia Southern out at the Bob Heck Softball Complex at Panthersville. On Friday, May 13th, baseball hosting Troy at the Georgia State Baseball Complex. They will play again on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday at 2 and Sunday at 1. And that's what's coming up this week in Georgia State Athletics. And welcome back to the Georgia State Sports Update. Dave Cohen joined in studio by Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb. And Charlie, we were talking a little bit about facilities and what it takes, uh, you know, to, to up-ramp uh, the facilities and the challenges that uh, you face on a weekly and monthly basis here since you've got to Georgia State. And, you know, we were talking towards the end of that first segment about sand volleyball and or beach volleyball, as it's, it's known, as uh, Beth Van Fleet has told me on more than one occasion. One only has to walk out behind the Georgia State Sports Arena to see a fantastic facility. And when I've been out there and the crowds have been like they've been for some of the home beach volleyball matches, it's turned out to be a great atmosphere for an area behind the sports arena that for years was basically nothing. It's a, it's a great venue and it's, and it's obviously a, a great use of space. And uh, we're certainly very appreciative for the, for the facility that our kids have to, to practice in and compete in. And, and certainly think it's a, a truly beneficial piece to, to why our, our program has started the way it has. And right next to that, it uh, just opened recently. Uh, it hasn't been out there that long, but uh, for years there was the swimming and diving complex, because I remember swimming in it back in 1982 or 1983 wow. when I first got here. Uh, the building was then closed for 25, 26 years or so. And finally, uh, Georgia State Athletics, uh, with the assistance of the university, has made it into a, a practice facility 
we'll see basketball and volleyball in there a lot, but I understand golf will participate in the building as well, as well as any sport that needs to go in there and, and practice. Great use of a facility. I've had a chance to go in and visit, and it's not 100% complete yet, but it looks outstanding for what's been done in there to this point. Yeah, it's a truly uh, uh, meets a need, and, yep. and it's truly a, uh, an awesome building space for for basketball and volleyball the golf piece is kind of that next evolutionary piece if we can make it happen uh, to finish out and, and complete it uh, it's one of those things that we we, we probably need to walk before we run uh, but certainly think it, it fits um, you know to, to complete the space uh, right now we roughly have about one third of that building that we can do something else with and and why not as we're going through a process why not uh, um, go ahead and complete it and, and find a great use for it so Look forward to that being a project. Hopefully, the summer and into the fall, we can we can finalize and and get moving forward. But we're really we're trying to touch every program that we have. Um, we have a, a lot of kids who, uh, um, on a daily basis, put a heck of a commitment into actually training for for whatever particular team or event they participate in. And, and it's one of those things that the less that we can put the stress on our kids on a daily basis to to find appropriate venues to practice and play in. Uh, we're going to be better, and we're going to be able to recruit a, a higher quality kid, um, and uh, and make ultimately make our team successful. And it is. I mean, I kind of refer to it as the arms race within college athletics. Barely a week goes by when you don't read a story about X university spending X millions of dollars to either build a brand new indoor football practice facility or what have you, or making improvements on something that's already, you know, a structure. I mean, it's, it's the landscape across college athletics that, uh, you know, facilities are uh, one of the top priorities, and, and a lot of schools are spending a lot of money to upgrade those facilities. Yeah, it's a, it's a unique perspective that you have, calling it the arms race. I haven't heard <laughs> that one before, um, but I was just kidding. And uh, it's, uh, part of it is, I think, for us is that it's what I like about, about where we are is we, we need to build functional facilities. Uh, we don't need to build shrines to ourselves or monuments to you or others. Uh, what we really need to build are facilities that give our kids an opportunity to compete. You've heard Coach Miles say it on many occasions. One of the one of the big areas where we got better this fall was our kids, you know, got bigger, stronger, and a lot of that credit goes to Scott and, and the people that we have around our strength and conditioning program. But it also has something to do with the convenience. The fact there's a weight room right next to the practice facility, which is right next to the locker room, which cuts down on the, the amount of time in between practice and workouts. Uh, for our kids to, to really get better and, and certainly uh, you have the ability to, to influence you know where they go in the afternoons uh, and when you've got that kind of competitive sp spirit and, and cooperation but also the facilities going behind it uh, our teams can't help but get better and yep. I think we, we saw that with, uh, with our football program this fall and so it's it's they're hugely important I think the, the, the uh, responsibility that we have is to not take it over the top but to, to really what build is needed and and really what's project out several years and say here's the next stage so that you meet you meet immediate needs but also um, you know needs that are coming right around the corner as well I mentioned in the first segment that we would touch on the Turner Field project and that is a massive project involving student housing involving potential retail but from the Georgia State athletics standpoint we're really talking about football and baseball initially right yeah it, it's a it's still a, an evolutionary process in terms of the development uh, every, every day passes, we're getting closer um, for that to be a final project. And, and certainly part of what I referenced earlier is to, to stop talking about the hypothetical and, right. and really get into more specifics. Um, the exciting part is, frankly, when you put a shovel in the ground and start digging dirt, turning soil, then you know a project is on its way. Um, there's, we still have a lot to do between now and, and that happening, but it's, you know, as every day passes, it's much closer to being a reality. It's much closer to being this transformational piece of property, um, not only for Georgia State, not only for our athletic program, but also for the neighborhood. Because I, I truly believe in, in our coaches and our kids and the, and the opportunities that they're going to provide for people and especially the young kids in the in the surrounding communities, to witness kids who uh, who are earning a college degree, playing on a varsity team, and probably had the same, you know, aspirations that that kids, you know, that are, would be around our facilities on a daily basis. And so I look forward to to that community outreach piece being a strong part of what we're trying to, to build and, and encourage uh, with our athletic facilities. I want to change directions now with Charlie and, uh, and, and thank him for embracing the Georgia State Athletics Hall of Fame. It was something that we had tried to do on more than one occasion and thank you for coming in and embracing it. And uh, it turned out I thought the first class of 10 inductees was great. 
Hopefully in the coming year, uh, we can maybe do a feature on one or two of the inductees, but uh, it, it turned out to be a great event. Standing ovation from the current yeah. student athletes for the Hall of Famers that were in front of them. I just thought it was a great night and uh, appreciate you embracing it. It certainly was, a, it was an awesome thing to, to be able to start. And, and uh, I guess maybe you'll, you'll have me back on the next show. I can read the email you sent me as to why you weren't in the inaugural class, given your long-standing tenure here. But uh, um, we'll get through that. Maybe you can be in class four or five, maybe eight, uh, as a parting gift, maybe for retirement, something like that. But uh, yeah, out of all of it, it was it was special to, to for the recognition for for those folks to to be on the field during the football game. But uh, as you as you referenced, we brought them back for the, the student athlete awards banquet couple of weeks ago and, and to have the current student athletes you know recognize the, this first group of Hall of Famers uh, because I think we have some some eventual Hall of Famers sitting in that room no question um, and it, it's just and that's quite a, kind of the legacy piece for passing of the torch uh, we talk a lot about we don't have a lot of traditions here at Georgia State and especially within athletics and this is one of those traditions that we can continue to to pass along but uh, you know, it's always great to, to, to recognize people for their accomplishments, um, certainly very meaningful to the families, and, and, it's, and it's one of those uh, legacy pieces that, that our program is going to benefit from for years and years to come. All right, and finally, uh, as we head into the summer, uh, just concluded recently spring football practice with a great blue-white spring game, uh, but August will be here before you know it, and I know one thing that uh, we all want to encourage is for folks to buy season tickets and uh, come out and support head coach Trent Miles, his staff, and these Georgia State football players. Yeah, there, there's tremendous energy around the football program, and it's uh, fun to, as I've told many people over the last several weeks, it's great to be talking about Georgia State football in August, and uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in April. And uh, it's just one of those things that is part of the building, the evolutionary process. We're, we're over the hurdle of, of being a developing program. Uh, we have serious thoughts about competing for a Sun Belt Championship this, this fall. Uh, the kids will be here all summer uh, doing their workouts. The coaches have the opportunity to work with them in July. And, uh, and August camp rolls around, you know, as you say, before we know it. We certainly like to maybe enjoy a couple of weeks of summer and, and rest and, and, and gear up. But, uh, but our kids aren't going to be resting. Our coaches aren't going to be resting. And so that, that makes it exciting. But uh, you know, every campus knows that when your football team is winning and having success, it, it creates a lift and a, a level of excitement. Uh, that you just can't match in, in other in other ways, and and I'm very very proud of the effort they that they closed out the, the 2015 season, uh, and incredibly excited about the opportunity in front of us. So, you know, if you're a Panther fan, um, it's time to unleash your your inner Panther, as we like to say, and and uh, it's it's it, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, Charlie, appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll look forward to having you back soon. Uh, again, August will be here before you know it, and uh, we'll be kicking off in the dome before you know it, but. Uh Appreciate it's, you coming in. It's been great to be on the Dave Cohen Show. I appreciate <laughs> that, so thank you. All right, I want to thank Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb, coming in for not one, but two segments today. A lot of academic success within athletics at Georgia State University, and our Nathan Nadir takes us inside the academic achievements within Georgia State Athletics. Meet Yasmin Sari, Selene Lacoste, and Jemima Gregson. Three members of the women's golf team who currently holds a GPA of 3.79, which is the highest out of all GSU teams. I had a chance to sit down with the ladies to talk to them about how they're able to manage being a successful student as well as an athlete. How are you guys as a group, you know, there's more than you, just you three ladies here, obviously on your golf team. How are you guys able to manage being an athlete as well as a student? I think it's like time management and like planning ahead. Um, personally, I put like everything down on like an agenda, and I also put like the day when we're like off for a tournament, so then I know what assignments I need to plan in advance, and I just try to avoid progress procrastination. <laughs> and uh, I know I'm a junior, so I can help them out. So like if they have a question, I can ask. They can ask, and I can just like try to help them. You know, you touched on it right now that you're a junior. Yeah. And you know, you're able to help the girls. Um, being one of the most experienced ones on the team, as far as this panel goes, um, what do you tell like, let's say a new teammate is coming in? What are some of the things? Do you talk to them as far as like expectations go? What are some of the things that you tell them? Um, well, um, usually we get like international mm -hmm. uh, freshmen. Uh, next year we actually get World Cup, so they're gonna know about the culture here and they're gonna know how like the expectations are for Georgia State. Um, it's not just golf, like Georgia State is a great school, so we need to like manage both academic and 
golf and I think it's really important so like um, I think it's important to not lack on school. So I know like the academic system you know over across the water is more uptight and more stricter so you, we're kind of brought up in this study first kind of mentality. Um, do you think from what you learned over in Germany how they study first uh, mentality. Do you think that really helped you when you came over here as far as your transition in academics? Yeah, I think it definitely helped because in school always academics was first and the professor made sure that we really um, studied a lot and we didn't put golf first so that really helped to um, prepare for college. Yeah, it was pretty much the same. I mean, we're like next to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like yeah, over there school is like um, the thing that you put first no matter what and uh, it just teaches you a lot of like self-discipline and um, you just like need to do your thing even though you have other uh, stuff going on outside the school and uh, back home we have school like from 8 a.m. to like 6 p.m. so it's like all day long so we really need to like know how to uh, focus on the right things, the right timing so I think it was like um, a good learning experience. I came from a school to start with uh, in England where I did golf and academics at the same time. So I didn't do quite as many hours, but it really, it was a good stepping stone for me to know what I was coming into. I asked the ladies if they had any go-to study spots on campus and in unison they said, Stay Stay home. <laughs> Study Hall, also known as a Student Athlete Learning Lab. It's an area open to all Georgia State athletes that offers a quiet, monitored setting and it allows student athletes to get work done. With all this in mind, I was curious to see what they would say are the keys to staying focused. Yasmin summed it up in the best way possible and it's something we should all take to heart. Maybe remember how lucky and thankful we are to get this opportunity, then you realize why you're doing it and it's easier to work hard and be focused on both golf and studies. Back in the Georgia State Sports Update, I want to thank Nathan Nadir for that fine piece on the success within Georgia State Athletics. And we're joined on set right now by Callie Mann. If you've been watching this show, you have seen Callie numerous times bringing you the Georgia State story, both athletically and across the campus here at Georgia State. Callie, great to have you uh, here on set with us. And you're getting ready to graduate in June. You've told a lot of great stories about what goes on or what has been going on here at Georgia State, including going with us down to Orlando to the Auto Nation Cure Bowl and how exciting that was. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're thinking now as uh, you come to the conclusion here, getting ready to graduate from Georgia State. Well, you know, it's been an amazing run working uh, with this whole practicum and this channel that we have going on. Uh, I've learned so much about journalism. You know, interviewing, going down with the football players and interviewing them one-on-one -on -one and talking to our founding coach. I learned something about sports that, you know, I never had ever thought of before. You know, that's the thing that I try to do is I try to uh, make this personable. I wasn't really a sports girl. I mean, I love sports, but I wanted to be a crime reporter. You know, <laughs> I wanted to stick the microphone in the face of the guy and say, did you do it? You know, yeah. and I, I have done that before. But doing some sports and learning, you know, what our athletes, you know, strive for, the driving forces behind them going to practice all the time and studying. And we have excellent, you know, academics in line with our athletic department. So that's what I've learned, you know, working with Georgia State Athletics. So it's been a great run. When you think back to all the stories that you've covered, uh, maybe even going to Orlando uh, in that historical bowl game or uh, the, the four-game winning streak for football to get to the bowl game. Is there a story or two or maybe a person or two that you interviewed that, that kind of stuck out, one that you'll remember? Nick Arbuckle. When he was telling me about, you know, his mom passing and, you know, looking into his eyes and seeing that motivation behind him behind his story mm -hmm. that really stuck with me and then I asked him that final question you know when we lost the game I said you know what's going through your heart right now and I just saw that disappointment because I could tell that he put his entire heart into this and that's what journalism is all about 
it's about the heart of the story. Right. So that's one that will probably stick with me for the rest of my life. Talk a little bit about your experience as a student at Georgia State. Georgia State has been amazing. Um, just having the ability to produce, you know, documentaries with the school providing the equipment to do it. Right. Had a lot of shoots where I'm like, yeah, we're students working to create these documentaries and we show up and we have real people equipment and they're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting it to be like this. You know, it's all about the opportunities that you take. But the fact that Georgia State provides opportunities like this, and I've had amazing professors and mentors. Whenever I was confused or shaky on a set, didn't know how to talk to someone, they would always come in and just smooth out everything. When people were a little concerned, seeing that I was so young, they would come out and just be like, hey, it's all good. You know, she knows what she's doing. And that gave me confidence. That gave the crew confidence. And yeah, being at Georgia State, having the opportunity to produce things that go on air is just unparalleled. I'm sure you'd like to stay in Atlanta. TV <laughs> is an interesting business. You never know where you may end up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, where you might end up with your television career? You know, I love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. A lot of stations are moving to New York. I fear that. Uh, <laughs> I love the South. You know, it's warm. Uh, I'm near my family. What I do with journalism, you know, the benefits outweigh the consequences of leaving home. I feel like I can touch a lot more people, and that makes it worth it to me. Well, Callie, it's been great having you be a part of the show, and uh, yeah. you've told some great stories, and uh, you've seen some historical games in the history of Georgia State Athletic oh, League. Yeah. I guess all, all we can say uh, for myself, the entire crew, is a uh, best of luck moving forward, and we'll look forward to seeing you on another TV screen soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> I want to thank Georgia State Sports Update reporter Callie Mann joining us here in studio. Time now to take a look at our GSU Championship Central. Here's what's coming up. 2016 NCAA Beach Volleyball Championships coming up May 6, 7, and 8 in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Georgia State going to take on the number two seed Trojans of Southern Cal. Georgia State going in as the number seven seed. 2016 Sunbelt Softball Championship May 11 through the May 11th through the 14th down in Mobile. That'll be at Jaguar Field at the University of South Alabama. And finally, the 2016 Sunbelt Men's and Women's Outdoor Track and Field Championships May 13th through the 15th at the Cajun Track and Soccer Facility at the University of Louisiana Lafayette in Lafayette, Louisiana. That's the latest from the GSU Championship Central. Well, this is our final show until August. And as I normally say at the end, we want to thank the crew. And I've got the crew with me on set. Guys, appreciate it. We'll see you all hopefully when we roll, out, roll around again in August. All right, for the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in August here at the Georgia State Sports Update.